frivolous challenges here in Hennepin County, how can you account for that? How can I, I can't account for what the uh, Hennepin County officials did. I mean, if you look at, first of all, I just I want to say generally that I really appreciate uh, the time and effort that everybody spent this morning. Um, the fact that we withdrew a large number of challenges doesn't mean that we necessarily agree that those were frivolous challenges. They're simply challenges that we didn't think would prevail uh, in front of the canvassing board. What we've tried to maintain all along is that we should have the right to look at you know, people at the tables make the calls, and they're under a lot of pressure, and they're not highly trained in this. We give them as much training as we can. But I was surprised at the number of ballots I could look at, and I'd say, yeah, I understand why they did that. It's not going to stand up, you know, but there was no bad faith here. It was a good faith effort. What we wanted all along was access to these ballots so we could decide which ones we'd pull out. And as we told the canvassing board yesterday, we were going to pull out a lot, and we really did. Um, you know, in other counties, uh, uh, we'll see uh, what we get there. Uh, but, you know, I think that the whole process of get, trying to give to the table officials uh, the final call on what's a frivolous and not a frivolous uh, ballot just probably didn't work out as well as uh, Secretary of State Richie thought it would. Uh, in the end, I think that we, uh, uh, we actually rescued uh, some absolutely rock-solid, legitimate challenges. Uh, that had been declared frivolous. We also got rid of a lot of chaff. So I think that the canvassing board's work will be much easier. How many did you withdraw? Do you know? Lots. <laughs> did you count? Well, no, I did, we didn't count how many we withdrew. It was easier to keep track of the ones that we didn't withdraw. Which was 24? I think it was I think it was 24. That was the final total. And as I said, the fact that we would withdraw uh, uh, a, a particular challenge doesn't mean we agreed it was frivolous. It's just when you when you look at the statutes and if you think about uh, you know you, you've got a, you've got a stray mark on a ballot and it is clearly a, a mark that isn't intended to be a write-in it's something well it isn't just having a mark on the ballot uh, that invalidates it you have to decide that it was the voters' intent to identify the ballot so I can see a table official saying. Look, they scribbled, you know, I saw one where they had kind of scribbled all down the side. Uh, and maybe they were testing out their pen, who knows. But I don't fault the table representative from challenging that ballot. But I'm not taking that in front of the canvassing board because I don't have any evidence that that was an intent to identify the ballot. So that's why we have the process of withdrawals, so that people who aren't in the, in the battlefield, so to speak, I uh, could sit back and reflect and say, you know, that's just not going to get us anywhere. What's the status of the 24? Do they still, are they still labeled as frivolous challenges? They are li labeled as deemed frivolous challenges, and I think the canvassing board is going to look at them. And as uh, uh, Justice Anderson told us yesterday, we better be pretty sure that uh, there's some substance to them than we are. So what now becomes a road to victory? I mean, you still 8,000. 8, <coughs> Well, at this point in time, as Representative Emmer said, what we're trying to do is make sure that the count is accurate. Um, it's mandated by law when you have an election this close. Once we figure out exactly what the ballot count is, then the representative will be able to make some choices as to, as to where it goes from there. So have you abandoned challenges as a route? <coughs> I haven't abandoned anything. I'm trying to get the count accurate. What happens with the other counties, with the frivolous challenges in the other counties? You know, we're going to get copies of those uh, Monday. We're going to do the same thing we did here. Uh, we're going to decide whether to retain them uh, and uh, ask the canvassing board to look at them or we're going to withdraw them. And where are you going to do it? Is it centralized? Uh, no, it's not centralized. I think headquarters. We'll do it at headquarters um, because uh, we agreed that copies could be transmitted of those. It's just rather than copying all of this stuff and then having us look at it, you know, we just agreed that it would be more uh, efficient. And you saw we we moved on pretty well. Based on your experience here today, do you have any plans to crack open the 900 or so legitimate challenges that are going to the canvas board before Wednesday? It's absolutely always been our intention to review those as well. And you know, one of the things this is the point I tried to make at the canvassing board meeting. Um, you can have a whole string of similar challenges that you think are pretty good. Uh, but once you see that a canvassing board, these five individuals, uh, uh, go another way on it, uh, then you have to decide whether you're going to maintain them or not. You know, when, when I was on the canvassing board, 
We had a big deal with the X's and the filled in ovals. And it wasn't until the canvassing board made a decision on how it was going to treat those um, that the, the parties could then decide we're not going to get anywhere by maintaining that. And so, you know, we have always intended to review uh, the challenges that were made at the tables that weren't deemed frivolous. Uh, and we may withdraw some of those as well. The idea is not to make this complicated. It's to get the right count. And, you know, today, I, um, in my ballots I looked at, I found two that were absolutely, what I'd say, rock solid, gold standard. These were not frivolous challenges. In fact, they'll be sustained uh, by the canvassing board. Now, you know, was it worth all that effort to get two more ballots? Well, um, you know. With those rock solid challenges, what did you see? Uh, they, were, they were clearly overvotes uh, uh, in both of them uh, and had been called for Dayton nonetheless. And the challenge was that they were not Dayton votes, they were overvotes, and that should have been sustained. Um, but, you know, we've got to look at all of this, and there's a process. I guess that's what I'm really trying to say. There's a process that we've always wanted to have followed. We want to get this right. We want to make sure legitimate votes are counted, that everybody's vote that should be counted is counted. Uh, and uh, we think we've gone along with towards that. You talk about getting the count. It's clear, though, at this point that that count is going to settle with Representative Ever behind. I would be surprised if it didn't. So then why keep this process? There well, are I, think that I, are I think I answered your question already. You have to get an accurate count before you can evaluate what next steps you take. And that's what we're trying to do right now is make sure we get an accurate count. Do you expect the, this to be finished on, and a winner to be certified on the 14th? Is there anything else in mind? I think that's our goal. We still that's, what are there any, that's what Representative Hammer has uh, stated as his goal. And are there any more wrinkles in the recount process you expect to come up in Wrinkles in the recount process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so far, it hasn't been a smooth uh, 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 field so far. Uh, you know, We're just going to take things as they come along and try to get our work done as quickly as we can. Well, we still account for an extraordinary number of percentage of unprivileged challenges from this from this county. Do you think there was overzealous or maybe inadequate training for the volunteers here? You know, I don't think, I think it was a combination of things. Uh, I think you, you certainly have most of the votes here in Hennepin County. Um, I, you know, personally think that putting, trying to give the table officials the power to definitively rule on whether a challenge was appropriate or not just caused more friction than it, uh, it caused more problems than it solved. And I'm not going to, I mean, we've been through that. The process is what it is. We worked really hard this morning. We got things cleaned up, and we're moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're going to look at this one. Yes. Enjoy. Do you want to see? Oh, it's We're going to look at this one. I'll film the burn. good. Hi, everybody. Um, Would it be easy if I said anything? I'm Charlie Nowen uh, on behalf of Mark Dayton and the Dayton Recount team. I want to start by thanking everybody at Hennepin County, Rachel Smith and her team, uh, Pat Diamond, Dan Rogan from the Hennepin County Attorney's Office, made themselves available here today. We spent all day looking at the ballots, and we found out what we really knew going in that virtually all of these uh, challenges are indeed frivolous. In fact, uh, there were 24 total uh, uh, challenges that were pulled out by the Emmer team. Less than 1% of the uh, ballots that had been challenged over the last four days. And the thing that uh, you got to know about that is that over the five days, I guess it was, that we were looking at ballots here in Hennepin County, there were many opportunities for the Emmer team to do what they did today. In other words, look at the ballots and make the decisions that these were uh, these were frivolous. And it could have been done during the week just as part of the process. And so we're here today and we all sat around, looked at uh, over 2,600 frivolously challenged ballots and pulled out 24. And according to my count, and I have all the pages here that we looked at in the last few minutes, <coughs> that was in 22 of the, I think, 425 uh, precincts in uh, Hennepin County. So uh, we're pleased that, that one more step in the uh, process has been undertaken here. And uh, we're looking forward to having the process end on December 14th and these results be certified by the Minnesota State Campus Board. Thanks, Dave.
Yeah. How big a step ultimately was today towards the end? Well, it, it, uh, it was something that the board ordered yesterday uh, that the campaigns have a chance to look at these uh, frivolously challenged ballots. We got through in about uh, three or four hours, and um, it kind of made clear what was known. I mean, uh, in the letter that we sent to the canvassing board on Thursday, we attached the ballots from Minneapolis Precinct 13-3. And there were eight or four challenges, and I had actually stood over the table and watched those uh, challenges be made, and I knew that all 84 of those were frivolous, and in fact, none of them were um, retained uh, to be submitted to the board at any point in time. So it's good to have it done. It's good to demonstrate that uh, most of these uh, challenges, 99% plus, were indeed frivolous and have now been withdrawn. And, and I anticipate that the the other uh, main categories, uh, counties where there were frivolous challenges, Renville and Dakota, I suspect the number is going to be something like this, too. In Renville, I, I wouldn't be surprised if 100 percent of the uh, frivolously challenged ballots are withdrawn by the Emmer team. This race over? Well, the, the, the uh, lead is uh, over 9,000 votes, according to our total. The process is coming to a close. Uh, except for some review of the um, frivolous challenge ballot, the recount's over. We should all be celebrating that. Yesterday afternoon, it ended in Hennepin County. That was the last of the recount. And um, there's no doubt that come the 14th, that lead will be a substantial one, uh, 9,000 votes plus, we think, for Mark D. And I think that says it all. The numbers speak for themselves. Could you comment on the public perception of the accuracy of the elections and the public perception of the <coughs> process in light of the allegedly frivolous challenges that go on today? Look, in, in the state of Minnesota, um, this election, the elections over the years and the election this year are always held up as a standard nationwide. And uh, I think what's been borne out in the original election numbers in the uh, canvassing that was done by the counties, in the post-election review that was done by the counties pursuant to statute, and now in the recount that these numbers are incredibly accurate and the process is at the highest level that we can find in the, in the United States. How many frivolous challenges did your have? We had, um, I think it was 43. We withdrew them all in our letter to the board on Thursday. At that time it was 42. Um, there was one more that we found out later in the day. There were a few others that were denoted as frivolous um, uh, in the last day of counting in Ramsey, and uh, not in Ramsey, but in Hennepin County, and those were withdrawn right away by us. So ultimately, the answer to that is zero. We have no frivolous challenges. Do you think Hennepin County's time was wasted? I estimate myself that maybe 20% of their time was devoted to this. Well, I don't know about that. I wasn't around Hennepin <coughs> County long enough to have any kind of estimate. But I do think that this process could have been done as it was done in so many places <clears throat> as it went along. And for some reason, it ratcheted up in Hennepin County. There were many attempts by uh, Rachel Smith and her team and also the representatives of uh, Mark Dayton to try to, to uh, uh, nip this issue in the bud. And um, it just wasn't done. So we ended up with spending the day here and looking at 2,600 frivolous challenges and end up with... Do you see any more wrinkles about <coughs> the recount process that would take it longer than December 14th to certify it? No. I don't think there really haven't been any wrinkles. There's been some garden variety issues that come up every time there's a recount. Uh, and all have been resolved as you went along. It really has been a model recount. I think uh, um, the state should be proud of itself. All 87 counties. Uh, Secretary of State's office and all the volunteers across the, the entire state. It really was a very smooth recount. Anything else? Can you spell your name? Yes, I will spell my name. <laughs> N A U E N. Charlie N A U E N. I E R E Y. I E. Can I please put your name? Pardon? Can you spell your name? Uh, Sorry. I can spell whose name. <laughs> it's L-I-C-A-R-D. <laughs> M-A-G-N-O. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.